Today I want to tell you a story, a story about war, freedom, and reconciliation. 1898, Malangiga, a small town in the island of Samar in the Philippines. A garrison of the 9th Infantry of the United States controls the town and has instigated an aggressive policy of food deprivation and property destruction. Echoes of the torture of the Filipinos by American soldiers, including the infamous water torture, are widespread. The villagers decide to counterattack. Dressed as women attending a funeral, 500 Filipino men ambushed the American soldiers. 48 American soldiers and 28 Filipino villagers lose their lives. A few days later, the U.S. Marines, led by Brigadier General Jacob H. Schmidt, arrived in Balagiga. What he ordered was simple and yet tragic kill every male over 10 years old. In the massacre that followed, thousands of Filipinos were killed. The town of Balangiga was shelled by artillery and its church was burned to the ground. The three bells of Balangiga that were used to signal to start the attack are seized as war booty. The bells of Balangiga the most important religious relic of all Filipinos are still in U.S. custody. I learned a long time ago that uh, some of the best Americans we have are Filipino Americans. And uh, my father actually fought in the Philippines during the Second World War. And so when I went over to the Philippines early on in my career, I was horrified to found out that a national treasure of the Philippines was being kept in the United States. And the bells of Balangiga are something that are touch the soul of the people of the Philippines. And uh, we should not take that lightly. And uh, the fact that they haven't gotten them back uh, all these years uh, doesn't speak well of us. Those bells mean a part of the heart of the Filipino people. It represents the heart of the Filipino because deep in the heart of the Filipino is uh, a desire to be free. And uh, it represents the price that the Filipino would pay for freedom. When I went to Balangiga, one of the things that impressed me the most was the villagers themselves. These are simple villagers, fishermen, farmers, it's a small, out-of-the-way place, yet they have a sense of their history and how it plays into the wider history of the world. For them, the bells are priceless. They represent their religion, represent their culture, and more importantly, represent their historic struggle for freedom and independence. All my life, I have been getting things back for people. I'm a retriever. As an international investigator, I've gotten back diamonds, family fortunes, paintings, families' children that have been kidnapped, people taken into human trafficking. I retrieve things, get them back. I first went to the Philippines when I was 19 years old doing USO and I loved it so much. I loved the people so much that I stayed for 10 years in the Philippines. I had a jazz club there as a young man. I was even a movie actor in the Philippines. I did American films and local films and loved the country, traveled all over, got to know the people and I have very, very close ties to the country.
As I did more and more research into this, digging into it, I found that years ago, a congressman sponsored a bill, along with a senator, to return the bells. And the congressman was named Dana Rohrbacher, who happens to be the congressman for Orange County, where I live in California. And he also happens to be a friend of mine. I have lunch with him, and I know him well. So I immediately called Dana, went to Dana, and I said, what happened? You know about these bills, the, the bill, you did the bill, you sponsored the bill, why didn't it work? And he very simply said, lack of awareness, Logan. He said, no one knew about it, nobody cared about it. So I said, okay, I, would you be willing to do it again, Dana? Would you be willing to work with us again? And he said, absolutely, I think they should be given back. I then knew exactly what I had to do. If this is gonna be my case, if this is gonna be my next mission, then I need to put a team together. The people of the Philippines are some of our very best friends on the entire planet. And uh, this would be equivalent of, uh, of having some other country having the Liberty Bell and <laughs> keeping it there. That would mean so much to Americans. Well, if these are our friends and we want to reinforce that, we should give them their bells and we should do so with great ceremony and an appreciation that they let us keep them as long as we had them. When a religious relic is stolen and taken away, I think, and peace is made and allies are made and years pass, and that religious relic is, is languishing in obscurity in a, in a foreign country like ours is to the Philippines. And it's the bells of Balanjiga are, are in Wyoming. And, and why are they in Wyoming? And I, I don't think anyone can, can argue with the fact that they need to be returned. They need to be, they need to be given back. We can start this campaign in a matter of a week or so. Once we have raised the money, the goal is to keep this awareness in the public eye. We have persistence. We have got to keep this going. We want to inform everyone. We want newspapers to do stories, radios. We will buy ads in newspapers in the Philippines, in Wyoming. We want to travel back to the Philippines. We want to get the mayor of Balangiga. We want to bring him to Wyoming, meet the governor of Wyoming. There are people in Wyoming, there's a small group that is standing firm to keep the bells and hold on the bells, but I truly believe they don't know the full story about the bells. Once they learn the entire story, I truly believe that they will be in agreement with us. Information is knowledge. Knowledge leads to power. We need part of this money to make a beautiful documentary about everything that happened in Balagiga. Ito po'y isang pananawagan sa lahat ng mga Pilipino na nandiri ito sa Amerika, sa Pilipinas, at sa buong mundo. Suportahan po natin ang kampanyang ito na maibalik ang kampana ng balanggila.